Hello everyone, well here we go again, it's time for another season of Christmas updates. So on the 1st day of November, we always begin uh, the countdown to Christmas at Gaz Webbies and over the next few weeks you will be seeing more and more Christmas updates turning up. I've got 25 of these pencilled in between now and the big day uh, itself and uh, they start a little bit sort of infrequent for the first two or three weeks. Around mid of December they will start getting more frequent um, then. But uh, but yeah, here we go again, another season of Chris Subday. So I shall get on with that for you uh, very shortly. Uh, just to say that we have released the 9th week 2020 update part one uh, earlier on today. So uh, have a look at that. That video will be placed on the winter updates page hopefully this evening, if not this evening, tomorrow morning. Morning with a written summary at gasweathers.com. We're going to be live streaming uh, from 6 o'clock this evening. You'll be able to uh, check into our live stream uh, from 6 o'clock. No doubt this Christmas update and the night of winter update will be discussed in the live stream as well as show you some winter data. So all of that is uh, is to come. Uh, big, big thank you to our good friend Richard Traw for the uh, fabulous Christmas 2020 uh, updates gift. Thank you so much, Richard. I want to say thank you to Richard. Richard, uh, for the updates gear, that'd be absolutely great. Thank you so much to Richard for our wonderful uh, Christmas 2020 updates gift this year. Thanks so much, Rich, uh, for that. Right, just to explain what we're doing then. Uh, so we're going to be going through the uh, CFS V2 uh, model at uh, metroseal.fr. And uh, we're going to attempt to use a 12Z all the time. Sometimes we may not be able to use the 12Z for uh, every update. The CFS is run four times a day, same for GFS. So it's run at midnight, 6 in the morning, midday, and 6 in the evening. Um, so uh, we're going to attempt, we always attempt to use the same run all the time. Then we can't be told off for cherry picking. Sometimes something can happen that means we have to use another run. Um, but where possible, we always try to use the midday run, the 12Z. Of the CFS, I would normally, uh, I would normally uh, do it on the day, but it's been released at Metro Seal. But because we're premiering this first uh, winter, this first Christmas update, I'm actually uh, recording this on Saturday evening um, or Saturday afternoon. So this has been generated at midday, twelve a uh, twelve midday uh, on the thirtieth of October, on Friday the thirtieth of October. Uh, right, so we're just on the trains as well, of course. It's, it's far too far away to be able to pin down the exact detail of the weather for Christmas Day. Uh, this day, so we're going to try and get a train. If we see the same scenario cropping up time after time after time after time in these uh, Christmas updates, then we'll be able to say that we have a train. But sometimes we never get a train. Sometimes it just, you know, goes from one uh, scenario to another and we never get a particular uh, trend. Other times we do get a trend and you would expect the closer we get to Christmas, the, the greater the trend, the stronger the trend will get, if you see what I mean. So uh, without further ado, let's uh, bring you uh, the first Christmas 2020 uh, update. So we're looking for the weather around this Christmas period. So we're beginning early December and going through to like the middle of January. That sort of period, try and pick out and see if we can find any trains within that period. We're starting on the 1st of uh, December here with a westerly wind, a mild westerly wind on the 1st day of December. High pressure on south, low pressure is to our north and income the westerlies. Okay, so we run into the opening days of December. We bring a cold front down from the north. We try to so get a little bit of cold snap there from the northwest. Doesn't last very long. And then the next load rattles in on the 5th of December. That's been stormy weather. Very, very tight back tight back. about severe gales battering the country there on the 5th of December. As that low pressure clears away, we start to go colder from the north. The low pressure moves into the North Sea. Pull down this cold northern wind. That could bring wintry showers uh, south. I mean, not be very long for the next low rattles in. So in comes the next low. Uh, that brings more uh, severe gales and heavy bouts of rain as well. So it's a very stormy opening uh, to December. Uh, now, moving into the second week of December, more low pressure rattles in from off the Atlantic. Very, very unsettled indeed. It doesn't look like we're going to get a break from these areas of low pressure either. So, to the middle of December now, looking stormy again. Where we've got these purple colours uh, to the north of the British Isles. That is going to be very, very stormy weather indeed, with gale force winds battering the country and outbreaks of heavy rain uh, as well. 
Now, again, it's the middle part of December. It looks like the jet stream begin to dig southwards a little bit. So, this is starting to turn a bit colder now. We're running up towards, we're not at Christmas yet, but we're running up towards pre-Christmas. And we've got low pressure over and slight to the south of the country. But as the jet stream is digging south, notice how these low pressure are digging down towards Biscay and northern Spain. That's the jet stream uh, digging southwards. So, it is beginning to go colder now as we go into the pre-Christmas period. Uh, but still unsettled, still low pressure coming in off the Atlantic. And as these low pressures are digging south with the jet stream, we're on the cold type jet stream, you wouldn't rule out the chance of some snow coming in uh, with these areas of low pressure. Particularly this one just here, each successive low sort of, uh, let's run back, each of these successive lows starts to turn it colder on the northern side of these lows. So, so particularly this low just here, you wouldn't rule out the chance of that producing some snow. Now, obviously, it's far too far away, that kind of detail, but it's just the idea that I was running up towards Christmas after after a mild and stormy first half of December, this CFS run wants to turn things colder as the jet stream digs southwards. Let's see what happens as we get to Christmas itself, then. So, this is Christmas Eve Eve. This is the eve of Christmas Eve, 23rd of December. Heights are rising out to west, and we've also we're also trying to get high pressure going over Scandinavia as well. Winds are drifting into the east. It's quite a cold uh, uh, Christmas Eve Eve. Christmas Eve itself is looking like that. Again, having a really good go. Again, Miss Scandinavian high going. Look at this. It's got a 1,060 millibar area of high pressure over Scandinavia here. Having a really good go. Again, the wind into the east. There's a very cold pool of air as well sitting uh, across the northeast of Europe. But just not quite getting the wind into the east. What we've actually got is a slight ridge across the country. That would probably be within quite cold air. So a seasonable sort of feeling Christmas Eve to Christmas Day from... Uh, frost. Yes, there would be frost with this area of high pressure uh, early and late on Christmas Day. It would be a mainly dry day. Temperature by day, probably a bit on the chilly side. Plenty of sunshine and uh, some frost to make it look nice and seasonal early and late. Now, Boxing Day is beginning to bring low pressure back in off the Atlantic. That high pressure is still there, lurking away to our east. Talking about, we've still got the ridge of high pressure over Scandinavia, 1,050 to 1,060 millibars. So we've got a deep cold pool sitting to our east and north east as well. Looks like it would move our way on those easy winds, but we've still got low pressure out to west. So a bit of a battleground. Uh, a bit of a battle is starting to set up now. With low pressure to the west, high pressure to the east. Looks like it's a low pressure that's going to win the battle. So uh, we go beyond on Boxing Day, beyond the Christmas period, into like the pre-Christmas period, and we're returning back to Westerlies again. So after that attempt to build a Scandinavian high and uh, and get the wind into the east, we actually find uh, that the Westerlies return and sort of flatten off that Scandinavian high. We're up to New Year now. We're back under high pressure again. That's bringing mainly dry, cold and frosty conditions uh, for New Year's. This is New Year's Eve, of course. That's New Year's Day. And yes, we've got high pressure uh, over country moving back up towards Scandinavia. Uh, once again. So this is going to have another go at Game of Wind into the East. Will this be more successful? Let's see what happens. So we're beyond New Year now, up to the 4th of January. High pressure is over Scandinavia at 1,040 millibars. Low pressure is being blocked out to our west and south. And we're definitely tilting the wind into a south direction. That'll be bringing cold air in from the east. Not necessarily very cold at this point, but it will certainly be, be bringing colder air in from uh, the east. Let's move into second week of January and see what's going to happen. Low pressure then starts to try and come in from off the Atlantic, but it is struggling. This low is struggling as it's coming up against a deep, cold pool of air. And so we will probably start generating snow events here as these areas of low pressure uh, on the, by the 9th of January, coming up against a cold pool of air that's sitting to our north and northeast. Yes, you would expect snow events in with that. Uh, so let's run on a little bit further. The low pressures eventually start to be pushed southwards again, that cold pool of air. So, so northern Europe, Scandinavia, into the UK, sitting within a cold pool of air, sending the jet stream and these areas of low pressure southwards. This is a wintry opening to January, definitely is. 
Moving up towards the middle of January, all change again as low pressure comes back in off the Atlantic. We turn milder, stormier uh, once again before going back into something a little bit more northerly. So there we go. That's the first Christmas update uh, for you. And I mean... It's quite an interesting one, uh, really. So the first half of December uh, forecast to be stormy, to be uh, wet, windy, stormy. Uh, it goes colder as we run up towards Christmas. Uh, we have a really good go at generating a Scandinavian high around the Christmas period and bringing in a very cold, easy wind. This particular CFS run does not pull it off. Uh, we bring the Westerlies back in up to New Year before we again have an, yet another go at building up Scandinavian height. That one is more successful and does pull that cold pool of air in from the east by the same week of January. We're very cold and we're generating snow events from areas of low pressure bumping in to the cold air mass. Now, uh, of course, it's the first update, so we don't know whether this train to try and build. So what the main takeaway I take from this is that around sort of second half of December to early January, the CFS is trying to build up, this CFS run is trying to build up Scandinavian highs. Sometimes successfully, sometimes unsuccessfully, that would all be to be determined much nearer the time frame. But it's an interesting uh, trend, you know, it's an interesting idea to build up a Scandinavian high around Christmas to New Year to early January. And what we don't know is whether this is kind of like just a one-off that CFS is doing this, or whether this is a trend within the CFS. Of course, the more of these updates we do, the more we'll be able to see whether the CFS is regularly trying to build up these Scandinavian highs uh, around the Christmas to New Year to early January period. So, yes, quite an interesting update, I think, to start us off. And uh, it is interesting, I would suggest, the second half of December to early January is a period that seems to be on this update anyway trying to build up some high pressure over Scandinavia and get the wind into the east and pull those cold winds out of Russia into northern Europe but again, you know, uh, it's the first update and we've got to do more to see whether this is uh, this is an idea that's a one-off in the CFS or whether this is something that the CFS is, is playing with, is trending with quite regularly. So the second uh, update is going to be coming up for you uh, in a few days. I'll have the second Christmas 2000 and 2020 update coming up for you later next week. That one will not be Premier. I just want to do a, a Premier to start us off, you know, for the first update so that everybody knows that we started our Christmas updates but uh but the rest of the updates i doubt we may premier one or two more of them but i i doubt really that most of these chris updates will be uh premier there will just be normal regular uh uploads but yeah quite an interesting one to start us off please smash the like button if you've enjoyed this uh first christmas 2020 update let us know in the comments uh what you think about this make sure you subscribe to the Amazon youtube channel and we'll be back with more chris updates very very soon don't forget to check out the ninth uh winter 2000 and 2020 update part one that is uh that was released uh this morning and then we'll be live streaming from six o'clock this evening and uh, no doubt we'll be discussing this christmas update and the ninth winter update and uh, much much more as well and showing some winter data uh so that will all be coming up in the live stream from six o'clock for the first christmas 2020 21 update thank you so much for watching and that's all for now bye for now